here what's up guys welcome back to the channel in today's video i will be discussing all things ethereum staking so answering each and every one of your questions including what ethereum staking is all about and also just giving you a quick step-by-step -step process that is actually involved when you're staking ethereum and also answering the questions on how to participate in staking without you actually having to set up any hardware and also just looking at things like how much you actually make when you're staking ethereum and also some of the possible risks when staking it also the differences between staked eth and staking ethereum itself and also just ask, asking um, some questions like why isn't staked ethereum staked eth pegged to actual ethereum and also what some of the pros and cons when staking ethereum are so these are some of the questions that you guys uh, have been asking me over the years and i've just been collecting those and today i will be giving you this definitive guide i will also be talking about what some of the crypto projects are in the space right now that are actually focused on ethereum staking solutions i will also be giving you the best decentralized exchanges for ethereum staking and also the best centralized exchanges for ethereum staking and also talking about how you can stake ethereum via staking pools and also if you want to know how you can run your oath your own eth validator node and why your ethereum rewards are locked and how they are actually work in terms of when they'll be unlocked and also just answering questions and how long you actually have to wait after staking your ethereum to begin earning rewards so if you all about ethereum today this is the guide for you so make sure you give us a like and a subscribe hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of the top content that we drop on this channel also go to our main site decentralized.news and also check out the links in the description but without wasting any time let's dive right into this definitive guide on staking ethereum so the first thing that we must do is to actually define what Ethereum staking is all about. So Ethereum staking actually just re uh, refers to this process of holding a certain amount of Ethereum, the native cryptocurrency of the Ethereum blockchain and uh, doing so in a specialized wallet and then participating in the network's consensus mechanism by validating transactions and adding new blocks to the blockchain. So in Ethereum, this process is called proof of stake consensus, which is an alternative to traditional proof of work mechanisms that are used in Bitcoin and some other earlier cryptocurrencies like Litecoin, etc. So by staking Ethereum or Ether, users are actually able to help secure the network and are rewarded with new Ether tokens for the participation for these validations and stakers are also incentivized to actually act honest and avoid any malicious activities as they could lose their staked ethereum if they violate uh, the rules of the network so staking is a way for users to pretty much earn passive income in the form of uh, more ethereum while also supporting the overall security and decentralization of the ethereum network it can also um, sort of uh, act as an essential component of uh, ethereum's transition from that proof of work to proof of stake which is expected to then reduce the network energy consumption and improve scalability i've given my thoughts around what i think about ethereum moving from proof of work to proof of stake before so i'm not going to dive into that today i just want to give you a little bit about the step-by-step -step process that's actually involved in staking ethereum so the exact process of staking ethereum can actually vary depending on the staking service or platform that you're using so there are several steps uh, such as uh, just you being able to uh, obtain some ethereum you'll need to have uh, some ether in your possession or you can buy ether on a cryptocurrency exchange and uh, or you can receive it from someone else if you want to buy check out the links in the description then you need to then set up your ethereum wallet and uh, once you uh, set up that wallet make sure you uh, that wallet actually supports staking such as uh, metamask my ether wallet or trust wallet for example follow the instructions that are provided by the wallet provider and create a new wallet uh, and securely store your private key so obviously nobody can uh, access your funds uh, choose a staking service that you want to use you can just stake ethereum through a staking service on platforms uh, centralized platforms like binance or kraken or coinbase you can go to our ecosystems li link or tab on our main site if you want to know the best cryptocurrency exchanges that you can do that but i will also be giving you 
these uh, de in detail uh, in a little bit, but uh, choosing a staking service that suits you and uh, making sure you follow the instructions to make sure you can then go ahead and uh, deposit your Ether into that staking account. Once you've created an account with the staking service, you actually need to deposit some Ethereum into your staking account. And uh, after that, you can select the amount of Ether that you want to stake. You can wait for the staking period to end and withdraw your ether and the rewards that you get from staking so how to visit to participate without you actually having a, any hardware is also another thing that we need to talk about. It is possible for you to do that uh, without setting up any hardware. This this is because you know many of these staking services and platforms now offer staking as a service, which means that they handle the technical aspects of staking for you in exchange for a fee of a percentage of the rewards that you earn by staking your Ethereum. So this uh, staking service, normally, typically you can uh, stake your ether without having to purchase and maintain any hardware so if you want to know how you can actually participate in staking if you don't have a 32 ethereum this is also quite easily traditionally you need to have at least 32 eth which is a minimum required to run a validator node and participate in the network consensus so this requirement is in place to ensure the network of the uh, or the network security itself and also just to prevent uh, uh, attacks and malicious actors so there are some staking services and platforms that allow you to pull uh, your Ether together and stake collectively with others if you don't have uh, 32 ETH individually yourself. So this is known as staking pooling. It allows uh, sort of our users to earn rewards proportional to the amount of Ether that they contribute to their pool. So staking pools are typically operated by staking service providers who manage the technical aspects as, uh, again of the staking and distribute the actual rewards earned by participants. If you join a staking pool, you can participate in staking with a smaller amount of Ether and you'll still earn some rewards. It's uh, obviously important to know that uh, staking comes with some risks as well. Some of the risks we'll talk about later. But uh, how much do you make when you're staking Ethereum is another question that I always get from a lot of people. The amount you make staking Ethereum depends on different factors, including the amount of Ethereum that you actually staked, the current staking reward rate, and also the length and the time that you stake that Ethereum. So that's something that you always need to bear in mind. But in terms of the actual possible risks of uh, uh, staking Ethereum, there are many of them, including slashing. This is uh, one of the biggest risks. So uh, the possibility uh, of uh, getting slashed or penalized for violating network rules. This can happen if you fail to validate blocks correctly or engage in malicious behavior, such as attempting to double spend. Slashing can then result in a loss of funds that you've actually staked in the network. Uh, technical risks, again, staking involves running software on computers and using third party service providers to stake your Ethereum. There's always risks of technical issues, such as bugs, hardware failure, network outages that can actually end up losing you your state uh, rewards or funds okay so smart contract risks are also another one if you're staking uh, or looking up your funds in a smart contract on the blockchain if there are vulnerabilities in the smart contract code itself they could be exploited by hackers who may be able to steal your funds there are also market risks the value of ethereum and state it can be volatile so you have to bear that in mind and also regulatory risks you've seen what's been happening recently with especially in the usa with them really uh coming after some crypto exchanges about uh, uh staking and uh, so these uh regulatory un uncertainties and uh, are something that you also need to also keep in mind so let's just look at what the difference between state it and staking ethereum is so state it again like i said in the is that uh, staking it itself is just you know you as a holder of ethereum in a specialized wallet like we've talked about participating in uh, consensus and uh, getting ETH. the state ETH itself on the other hand refers to ether that has already been staked in the network by a validator when that ether is staked it is transferred from the staker's account to a smart contract on the blockchain that manages the staking process so the ether is then locked up in a smart contract for a period of time during which uh, the validator actually is able to earn rewards for participating in network consensus once staking period ends the staked ether can then be withdrawn by the validator and converted back into regular ether so the staked ether cannot be transferred or traded during staking uh, or during that duration uh, of staking, it is locked up in a smart contract. So that's something that you need to also bear in mind. So let's see, why isn't staked ETH 
uh, peg to Ethereum itself, because, you know, we did have that uh, problem before. We've seen some of these staked Ethereum de-pegging uh, quite a bit from uh, Ethereum, the main uh, token itself. So obviously staked ETH is a token that actually represents the Ether that has been staked in the Ethereum 2.0 network. Staked ETH is actually created uh, when a user uh, stakes uh, Ether in the network and it is used as a form of collateral to actually secure the network and to earn your rewards. So one might expect staked ETH, for example, to be pegged to ETH, meaning that the one unit of staked ETH would always be the same amount of Ethereum. However, it's not pegged to Ethereum. Its value can actually uh, fluctuate independently. And the reason for this is uh, that uh, staked ETH is an asset that's also based on supply and demand of the market, just like any other asset. The value of staked ETH can also be influenced by various factors, such as the demand for staking services, the number of validators in the network, overall health of the network, and so forth. So what are some of the pros and cons of staking ETH? Any rewards, of course, is a good one. That's uh, some of the pros, network security, decentralization, and long-term investment. These are some of the reasons that you would say, you know, it's good to be staking ETH. As far as, obviously, the cons, you have to look at some, some of the risks that we talked about, slashing, uh, risks, te uh, technical smart contract risks, liquidity as well being a problem, market risks, and also cost of entry sometimes. So what are some of those projects that are focused on Ethereum staking solutions? Rocket Pool, uh, I think RPL is a token ticker, is another one, a decentralized staking uh, platform that allows users to stake any amount of ETH regardless uh, of whether they meet the minimum 32 ETH requirements. So Rocket Pool also offers a node operator network that enables users um, to actually earn additional rewards by running a node. Lido or LDO is another token uh, or another staking uh, platform as well that allows you to stake ETH while still retaining the ability to use it as collateral or to trade it on exchanges. So Lido is built on a decentralized network of nodes that distribute rewards to users who stake Ethereum. Anchor is another one. So Anchor platform is a an ANKR is a platform that actually provides infrastructure for running nodes, staking cryptocurrencies. Inca also offers a range of fast solutions for staking Ethereum, including a node hosting service and staking pool that allows uh, users to stake their ETH with other users as well. Prism is another one. Uh, it's an Ethereum staking client focused on providing user-friendly staking as well. So it's built on a highly scalable modular architecture that enables uh, easy integration with other Ethereum-based services. Staked as well is another platform that offers institutional grade services for a range of uh, cryptos, including Ethereum. Staked also provides a range of staking solutions, including a, a node hosting service and uh, staking as a service offering that enables users to also stake ETH with uh, very minimal effort. So some of the best decentralized centralized exchanges for actually staking Ethereum. Uniswap is one of them, SushiSwap, Curve, and uh, Balancer, and Banco. All of these I've done full reviews of on our main site, decentralized.news. Go check this out as far as centralized platform where you can stake Ethereum, Binance, Kraken, Coinbase, uh, Bitfinex, KuCoin, etc. All of these exchanges, again, we've done full extensive reviews of them on our main site. Head on over to decentralized.news. So let's talk about what's going on with the regulations. The SEC has been clamping down on Ethereum staking. There's been a lot of uh, this talk, uh, but uh, you know this is something that is uh, remaining a primary challenge for the sector. Also, tax implications. I think there still need to be some clarity again around that. And uh, as far as how you can stake ETH via a staking pool and also how you can actually stake ETH via a non-liquid staking pool and also how you can actually run your own validator node. Make sure you check out the link to this uh, um, full guide that I actually did that's uh, on our main site that does cover all of this. But let's talk about what the current rewards of staking ETH are. As of uh, so far this time, February, networks are still in transition, of course, the phase of proof of work consensus mechanism to proof of stake. Uh, through that 2.0 upgrade. So during this phase, the annual percentage yield of staking Ethereum is fluctuating and depending on the current staking rewards network conditions, you need to check out what is that. But typically historical data and also current network conditions, estimations, APY for staking ETH is around five to 7%. So if you stake 32 ETH, you might get 1.6 to 2, 2.4 in uh, ETH rewards annually. So not a lot, but uh, again, you know, if the price and the value of Ethereum itself is rising, then this is something to really think about. So as far as, you know, why 
your staking rewards are actually locked. These are locked for a period of time, which varies depending on the network's conditions. The lockup period is called this churn period. It is a, a necessary to ensure, obviously, the network for security and uh, privacy and uh, so sort of, uh, to prevent those attacks. But also, I did uh, get into a little bit more depth. Check out the link to the actual article. And also, if you need to know how long you have to wait until you stake your ETH, make sure you check that out. Other than that, don't forget to head on over to our main site. Like I said, we've got free resources and tools for each and everything that you might need to learn when it comes to anything that is crypto or blockchain related from NFTs, metaphors, DeFi to trading and investing. So make sure you check out the links to my books as well, Tokenize Trillions and Blockchain Applied to Deal with Real World Asset Tokenization on the Blockchain and all the very different use cases of what distributed ledgers are being used across numerous industries. And also go to our Discord, our Telegram, join us there so we can get the dialogue going about what it is that we should be looking for in this new crypto market bull run it seems that we're entering other than that like share subscribe make sure you turn on the notification bell i will be seeing you guys in the next peace